I start every single day at the gym. Literally, I sleep here. 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. I'm doing leak code back. Ugh. <sighs> I usually like to start my day on the couch going through my plan for the day, which I plan on Notion, but I'm running a little bit late, so no couch time for me. Today's pretty simple. I got the coding boot camp throughout the day, and then I have a soccer game I wanna play, and then I wanna come back home and do some dash structures and algorithms and a little bit of coding before I watch Netflix and go to sleep. So let's, uh, let's get started doing that. Ooh. So it dawned upon me, as you know, things dawn upon people who are open and willing to being dawned upon, that if I wanna be this guy who comes on the internet, comes on the YouTubes and talks about how to get started in tech, how to start your career, I should probably get some experience on each of the different paths that you can use to get into tech. So I did go to college for a semester back in 2015 in a computer science program, so I'm basically a professional on that front. I am currently a self-taught software engineer in between jobs at the moment, but uh, a self-taught software engineer nonetheless. And I have no experience, absolutely zero, in this whole coding boot camp realm. That's why I'm super glad that Coding Dojo decided to sponsor this video, super pumped. So now I get to sit in on a coding boot camp and get some more insights to what a coding boot camp actually is, how they learn and how they do assignments. So I'm pretty pumped so that I can give some more better rounded insight to you all that are watching this video and following me along on my progression as a software engineer. I hate the mornings, by the way. Fun fact. Almost time to get started. Coding Dojo has a ton of different course offerings. I'm obviously going to take the software engineering bootcamp offering because I like to I like to code. I believe I'm going to be shadowing like week three or four of the software engineering cohort. That means this week I'll be going over web fundamentals, which is going to be pretty great because I haven't written like production code in a while because I am on vacation. So I will definitely take the chance to brush up. I'm going to get out of my robe though, because I want to at least give the appearance that I'm semi-professional. <sighs> All right, we're back and we're ready for action. Yeah, let's get started. 2.30, baby, won't you meet me by the beam? You know what it is. We're gonna be doing our morning algorithms. This one's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna be talking about JavaScript objects. So apparently they start most mornings off with a morning algorithm. This is web fundamental, so I expect some JavaScript up in this thing. I'll try not to chime in because I'm a bit farther than my second week of web fun and I wanna see what they can do and what they've learned so far. But if they need assistance, I will try to guide them in the right direction. So let's do some pair programming. So the group I'm with is pretty much sailing through our morning algorithm set, which is pretty impressive seeing as they only been in JavaScript land for like a couple of weeks. I got to pair and for that last bonus question, they just needed a little guidance, a little pushing in the right direction and bing, boom, pow, they were able to get the solution, which is, we love that. I really like how you're not just sitting in lectures for eight hours, but you learn something in a lecture and then you go practice it right away. So it's a mint up in your brain, because if you do just eight hours of tutorials or lectures, it's not gonna stick so this is a uh, pretty sick but I don't want to miss too much so uh, I'm gonna get back to it so we just got pulled back into the main room from our morning algorithm pair programming breakout sessions <gasps> the students are gonna talk through their solutions so we can go over where we went right how our algorithms run against edge cases and so on and so forth so we finished up going over all of our answers as a group and all of our shortcomings and our long comings whatever whatever is when you do really good and i like to stretch my legs a little bit so i'm going to do a little thing called tabatas which is just a four minute exercise to wake me up because i did have coffee but i also like to you know get my blood pumping just a little bit you know start the day this right here is my yoga studio very 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 fancy but yeah this is where i'm going to do my tabatas get my blood pumping and then make it back for the next lecture or i don't know what's next but i want to make it back for whatever's next Right on times. Let's do that. Moment to so now we're working with APIs. We just finished going over arrays and object literals. I'm listening in again. Now we're switching over to the fun part, in my opinion, which is playing with APIs, making a beautiful website out of information that we didn't have to create from scratch. So right now we're 
Right now we're using the Pokemon API to make a Pokemon website where you can look at the images of a Pokemon. It's basically a Pokedex. So that's pretty fun. We're learning about async, await, fetch, get, all that cool stuff in JavaScript. All right, it is lunch in lab time and I'm pretty serious about my fitness. So I eat a salad every single day. So I am about to put on a coat cause it's cold outside and go get my salad. Yeah, could I get a kicking chicken? Great, how are you? Thanks. Thank you. This is how you do transitions. No, they put a ton of fries in my salad, but I'm not gonna send it back because I'm not that guy, so might as well eat it. Yeah, management is gonna be hearing about this one because this doesn't even look anything like a salad. Ah, it doesn't taste anything like a salad either. I'm not sure if I can even go on. Oh, I ate that way too fast. But let's get back to it because, you know, the bacon doesn't fry itself or something. It is 2 p.m. and the instructor's going over what we're gonna expect for the next coming weeks. So he's going over things like what stacks we're gonna be learning, what projects we can learn, frameworks, libraries, so on and so forth. With blocks like this, I really like to switch up my environment so I'm not stuck in these four walls all day. Spice up my day a little bit. So I'm gonna head downstairs and tune into this conversation on my couch because it's a bit more comfy than this chair. All right, let's go. First of all, what's going to happen tomorrow? You'll be learning Python. It's going to be lovely. It's going to be a good time. You're going to be learning a new stack. So you're going to have to excuse the slouch because I am comfy. But yeah, tomorrow they're going to be going over Bootstrap, doing a learning algorithm, and then watching the senior class graduate. They showcase like what applications they built. I don't think I'll be around for that day, but it still sounds pretty cool. But they're finishing up on Web Fundamentals, which they call Web Fun, which is so much easier than saying fundamentals and so much more fun. Anyway. And then next week they're going to roll into Python and get new instructors and whatnot. But yeah, that wraps up the uh, what to expect block. We're just talking about what we're going to expect. Very well named, I might add. And uh, I'm about to head upstairs to learn some more coding stuff. Got back to my station upstairs because we're going to do some more hands-on stuff. Uh, we're learning the terminal and how to navigate it. Create files, create folders, delete files, delete folders, you know, RM, RF, everything. Fun fact, the government, which was my first job, you don't always have access to the terminal. So I didn't know any terminal when I got to my second position. So this is great that we're learning this now because it's super important. So apparently we're also going to learn Git today. I had to go back and learn software development all over again. Again, I would probably learn Git like almost a month after learning the code so I can, you know, version control, roll my stuff back and not have to delete all of my projects when I can't figure out what the bug is. And next up or, or last, either way, the last thing that we're going to do today, we're going to have a lab. And from what I gather, it's like this free time where you can either pair program with another student to work on a project together, or you could fly solo, work on your own projects, or you could even hang out in the main Zoom room and talk to the instructor about career advice, coding advice, literally anything. I'm going to finish my day with Coding Dojo in the main Zoom room, just hanging out, getting to know the students, answering some of their questions. I just like talking to people. So that's what I'm going to do to finish up my day. I'm actually really impressed with the questions that people were asking you. They're like challenging you on like education of stuff i'm like oh, some pretty good developer thinking already week two right all right yeah it's rounding about five o'clock which means it's the end of the day i had some really great talks with the students answered some questions for them and i got to know the instructors a lot more which are hilarious and the students from the senior class actually came back to just hang out with the instructors i want to go over everything i learned about coding boot camps and coding dojo specifically but i have a soccer game at six so i'm gonna do that real quick and hopefully i can kick the ball in the right direction anyway after that we'll talk about what i learned today I'm not sure how we won, especially with me kicking the ball, but we won. Anyway, I was going to do a review of like everything I learned about coding boot camps like right now, but at the end of the day, an instructor asked me to come tomorrow. I mean, yeah. I don't have any problems with you coming around. Like, it's pretty cool to see. To check out like their graduation, which they show like a bunch of their project that they've been working on. And it's like a showcase and then the graduation festival ceremony, ceremony festival. Yeah, but I'm gonna check that out cause that sounds fun. So, you know. Really exciting. And we're happy to have a 
a bunch of curious, passionate, awesome people in the field. I wasn't planning on shadowing this coding boot camp for more than one day. And I'm really glad that I did come back because I got to see what like the students or the graduates are truly capable of after like going through the whole entire coding dojo boot camp. Coding Dojo did a really good job creating a like community. It's really hard to do that virtually. I know we everyone had to make a huge shift over these last couple of years, but Coding Dojo did a phenomenal, phenomenal job putting a community together where people feel safe, people feel like they can learn, laugh, joke, and everything in between. I could tell they did a great job building a community because at 9.15 a.m., right when the day started, students were like asking questions, not just like random questions, but like questions that were like challenging, edge cases, what if this, what if that. It's, it's a beautiful thing. As a self-taught software engineer, when learning to code, it was so hard to figure out what to do when I got stuck, who to talk to when I got stuck, and even like if I I mastered a topic, what do I learn after that? And that's something that I wish I would have had a community that I could have gone to and practice with, learn from, grown with, but I, I didn't. But they have that here, so that is a huge plus. And outside of the really great community that Coding Dojo has, the projects that the graduating students were able to build were by far my favorite and most impressive thing that a student showed during his graduation was he made chess. I'm talking that he had a front end that worked. It had every checks and balances. You couldn't move yourself into check. Castle, you could do all the things you could do in chess. And he was storing all that in a back end. Like it was a full stack chess application and it was incredible. And even better than just like having a really great full stack application, he was able to explain every single line of it from front end to back end to everything in the middle. So that was, that was, I was, it was, it was very impressive. All in all, I'm really glad that I got to experience what a coding bootcamp looks like, like what coding dojo looks like, because this was amazing. I didn't know that this whole world existed. I knew about coding bootcamps, but I didn't really know about coding bootcamps. So thank you so much, Coding Dojo, for letting me tag along and learn more about coding bootcamps. That's gonna help me tremendously as I try to help other people get started in tech. And if you are one of those people looking to get your start in tech and you wanna go to a coding bootcamp from the bottom, of my deepest part of my heart from everything I've seen today and yesterday, I highly recommend you check out Coding Dojo. So check out my link in the description below to learn more information about Coding Dojo. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't done so part two, hit the subscribe button. And if you did both of those things, then thank you very much. I will see you on the next one.